Welcome back, everybody, to 93.7 The Ticket here on the Nico and I podcast. I have a very special guest for you guys here today. She is a transfer from Montana State, an absolute legend there at Montana State, as she, as the only person in the Big Sky Conference to ever get as many as points, rebounds, and assists in school history. She has surpassed the 1,700-point club. She's a three-time First team all conference all American. She also was the Big Sky Freshman of the Year, Big Sky MVP of the Year. And don't correct me if I'm wrong, but you were also, I think, the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, correct? Yes. Darian White, everybody. Hi. Correct? Okay, I got it right. I got it right. Thank you. I was messing up her name so bad before. It's Darian White, everybody. She is a transfer, a graduate student from uh, Montana State. She is a Idaho native. Dar- D, how are we feeling about being on the show tonight? I'm really excited. Thank you for having me. Am I supposed to hold this? Yeah, you or, okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Um, yeah. What do you have for me? Let's start. Let me see the mic real quick. Let me see the mic. Let me give you the introduction. Okay, so D, we do know that you came from Montana State. You've had a lot of success there. I was reading up on your profile a bit. I forgot to mention this in the intro, but in high school, she was the Gatorade Athlete of the Year. Her in her respective state. She was an absolute baller growing up. So I got to ask you, D, why did you end up coming to the University of Nebraska? So, as you said, I'm a transfer from Montana State. Um, I played in the Big Sky Conference for four years, and I accomplished everything that I wanted to in that conference. And so I was, um, I had another year because of COVID, and so I wanted to take advantage of that opportunity and challenge myself on a different level. And so when I came here, um, I had a couple visits planned, but I ended up canceling because I just felt at home as soon as I got here. Yes, I loved the coaches, players, um, and I don't know if you know this, but some of my old coaches and our trainer and our strength and conditioning coach was at my old school, my really? freshman year. Yes. Really? So they were already here. And so it just, everything fit perfectly. It was like yeah. a cherry on top. Awesome. Awesome. So she did mention that it felt like home. Nebraska does have that homey feeling. They call it Nebraska nice. And when you're walking around downtown, when you're going to a store, everybody is very personable, super nice, asking how your day is going. For me from Illinois, it wasn't really like that. I'm not sure how it really was for Idaho. But one question I got to ask you. So you did mention at the beginning that COVID did give you that extra year. That's why you're here and not currently playing professional overseas. Can you go ahead and tell the people what your COVID experience was like? Your COVID experience is very unique compared to other other people. So I'm going to have the fans and all the listeners listen up to this insane COVID story that she has to tell. All right, so my freshman year, we went 19-1 and one in conference, and then we were in our tournament, and we are going to the championship game, and they canceled it because of COVID. Mm. So that was a bummer. Um, and then going into my sophomore year, um, games were canceled, um, or we played some. We just didn't really know what was going to happen that season. Right. We were in and out of quarantine constantly, and... For our team, we were having girls, we'd have like one girl get COVID, and then our entire team would be in lockdown for like 14 days. And then we would get out of, co- out of quarantine, and then another girl would get it. So I was actually in quarantine for almost two months, I would say, like put it, putting it all together. Like I was in quarantine for a month straight because yeah. my roommate actually had COVID. I was in quarantine for 13 days, a day before I got out, I tested positive. So then I was in for another 14 days. So I was basically in quarantine for a month straight. Living in quarantine. Living in quarantine, exactly. (laughs) Um, But even though COVID was kind of a disaster, I wouldn't be here without it. So it's kind of of cool in that way. No. As, she, as you mentioned before, I mean, you were having the best season, 19-1, and one, absolutely killing it, dropping all these points, going nuts. She's a point guard, by the way. I don't know if you guys – I, I should have mentioned at the beginning. She is a point guard, absolutely killing it. So, unfortunately, that, dis, that does suck, you know, having that amazing season taken away from you because of, uh, you know, an unforeseen illness that took over the world. Um, I would love to know about, you know, why did you end up playing basketball, even as a, as a young child? Have you always played basketball? Did you always know you wanted to get to this level? Do you have aspirations of going to the WNBA? What, is it, what kind of started all this for you? Uh, my family is super, in bas- super into basketball. My brother has played, like, his entire life. Um, older. And Older. Yes, he's four years older than me. And so I would always, like, be at his practices, and I'd be, like, dribbling around and stuff. And my dad was his coach. And so oh. eventually he put a team together for – me and for like <laughs> girls girls my age yeah, um yeah so I had a crazy dad crazy coach uh <laughs> and so I think I've always had you know a dream of playing at a division one college obviously um but 
basketball was always kind of like a natural talent that I've had right. because of how young I started playing. Um, I started, I think I was on my first team when I was in like first or second grade. Right. But yeah, so it's been a while, but um, what was the other part of the question? I'm sorry. Ashford, do you have dreams going to the WNBA or taking oh, a small Oh, yes, profession? yes. Um, that's another reason why I wanted to transfer too, um, to help prepare me for the next level. My dream, of course, is to go to the WNBA, but um, there's not a lot of teams for the WNBA right now. And so going overseas will probably be my next step after this year. And then hopefully I'll, I'll yeah, yeah. And then right. make it to the WNBA after that, so. Yeah, you do have an amazing resume so far, as you mentioned before, breaking all sorts of record there in Montana State, coming here at the University of Nebraska, you know, get, being in the Big Ten Conference, being in a very competitive conference, you're going to kill it. And so I got to ask, I know you did start at a young age, but what separated you at the point guard position from other girls? Were you faster than everybody? Did you shoot better? Were you, uh, you know, did you give a lot of assists? Was it because of your rebounding ability? What separates you from the average point guard? Um, Good question. I know. <laughs> I, know. Um, I would say... I've always been very, very, very good at defense. Um, I'm pretty athletic. I've always been very fast. And so um, I think my ability to also score has kind of been the cherry on top to me being able to play defense. And I think that makes me stand out because I'm able to play on both sides of the floor. Right. Um, I have the ability, like I said, to score, but I also can get other people open by um, the opposing teams being scared of what I'm going to do on offense. Right. So. You're a space creator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really cool to hear. I mean, I played a little bit of basketball myself back in middle school, but, you know, I can't even imagine what you guys, I mean, she would probably cross me over crazy. <laughs> so I just like going to the wreck and shooting around, but it's, it's cool. You're actually the first uh, female basketball athlete I've ever had on the show. So congratulations. <laughs> Dee, thank you for being on the show tonight. So I want to know for you, so like I said, you've been doing this for a very long time. You've been at it. For, this is your fifth year now. You're a 22 year old, 22 mm -hmm. years old. So you're 22 and you're, this is your last year of basketball here at the college level. What is the hardest part you know about all of this right now is it your school is it the practices is it staying on top of things like time management what's the most difficult part about your day oh that's kind of hard too <laughs> um I would probably say time management um because I am in grad school it's taking it's not necessarily like super hard or like challenging what but grad school? Um, I'm getting a certification in youth development okay. so it's just like very time consuming yeah. um and so it's hard right now we're in October which is like the hardest year, in my opinion, of the of the year because, sorry, the hardest time of the year. Right. Um, because you're trying to get in shape and get ready for season, right? And so um, we're having super hard practices. And then on top of that, um, I have a dog at home. And so I got to take care of her. <laughs> I got to, Nora. Nora. Yeah, so I got to take care of her. And then I also have to get my homework done. And so yeah. just being able to uh, manage my time very efficiently where I'm able to get everything done and you know, make sure that my body's right. I'm eating good. I'm, I'm taking care of my dog and I'm sleeping enough. Um, it can be difficult times. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, but so far in meeting you, you definitely seem like a very responsible person. You seem very mature. I feel like your time in Montana State, even the, even the bad times like the COVID has really taught you a lot. And you were bringing that over here at the University of Nebraska, which leads me into my next point in the leadership role and the leadership ability. I know you coming in here, as you mentioned before, Montana State, you absolutely killed it there. You've accomplished everything you want to accomplish. What does it mean to be a leader for you on a team? Do you lead by example? Are you very vocal? You know, how do you, you know, get girls to believe in what you believe in? I would say I'm, I've always been a leader that leads by example. I think that something I can bring to this team is my experience. Um, I am a fifth year, and so um, I'm old. But with that, it comes with a lot of experience. And you know, I've had a lot of um, games that I've played, and, and there's a lot of hours and and tears that I put, you know, um, into the game. And so I think that's a big factor of me being a leader and being um, a big part of this team this year. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. You already gained a fan, and for whoever's watching this, go ahead and support D this season. I believe your first game is October 29th, correct? Yeah. Uh, against who? Um, our exhibition game is against Omaha. Omaha, so Omaha is coming to Memorial, mm -hmm. or not to Memorial, uh, to Pinnacle, yeah. Yeah. Pinnacle Bank Green here October 29th. I believe yeah. the, the men play too? Okay, okay, so the men don't play. <laughs> Just the women. The women are opening up know. October 29th. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So, uh, D, you've actually been killing this podcast. And I don't want to take up too much time of your day. But for all the listeners out there, I just love to close out, you know, with one question. Um, so where do you see yourself in the future? Just, you know, long term, really with everything, with all the experience. I know you do have aspirations to go overseas, potentially make the WNDA. But where do you plan on taking, you know, life after Nebraska, after college? Have you thought about that yet? I mean, you, you've had a lot of experience, as I mentioned before, very mature. Uh, you know, who, who's the person that you want to be, you know, 10 years down the road, like from now? 
my dream this year is to focus on building my brand. Um, I think Nebraska does a great job giving us opportunities um, for me personally that I've never had before. And yeah. so I really want to focus on that so I can um, build a platform and create a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Are you trying to leverage yourself? Basically, yeah. yeah. Leverage but your social media build a platform. Yeah, yeah. So I have um, a lot of opportunities with that. And then I also want to become a doula. So I'll have to go back to school for that. Oh, man. And it's kind of like a midwife, if you're not sure. Okay. But yeah, so that's like my dream job. And so I'm hoping to actually do that um, while I'm playing overseas. And then as soon as I'm done with my basketball career, get into that. Yeah, so right through the working world. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Hey, this was, say your name. <laughs> Darian, Darian this, White. This was Darian White, everybody. I, I refuse to mess up her name. I was messing up all before this podcast. But this is Darian White. She is from Montana State. Absolutely killed it. The Idaho native. She is very camera shy. So getting her on the show was an amazing. You, you are not going to see how many cameras besides the big screen when she's playing the game. She's absolutely killed this podcast. Thank you so much. And if you do have time, go ahead and follow her on Instagram. It is just her name, right? Mm -hmm. It's just her name. So as you mentioned before, you're trying to build a brand. Give her a follow. Follow a shout out be a supporter and follow her throughout the season. So this was the Nico and I podcast here in some Memorial Stadium. Thank you everybody for watching. Bye.